You may be asking yourself, why are we looking in this abandoned and disgusting looking garage? Well, Ryan and I checked out some truly haunted sites, such as garages and other buildings. We searched high and low for ghosts, ghouls, demons, and entities of the sort. Before we started looking into becoming ghost hunters, we originally wanted information about ghost hunting. Searching for Oklahoma City ghost hunters was easy enough, and contacting each one was simple. However, the trouble came as soon as we asked for additional information, definitions, techniques, and tools. At this point, nobody responded further. So, we researched without the supposed experts to find out exactly what we needed to do. We found some interesting things about ghost hunting that I think you should take a look at. Our ghost hunting attempts with EVP, or electronic voice phenomena, and EMF, electromagnetic field detection tools, were amateur at best. The important thing was that nobody would be able to tell that, that we were not licensed or official or even trained ghost hunters. We reacted much the same as any ghost hunter would and found as much evidence as any other ghost hunter, which was nothing. This opens up the question of how someone can become a ghost hunter, what tools are needed, and what can be expected profits of a ghost hunter. According to Shermer in 2002, science is a set of methods designed to describe and interpret observed or inferred phenomenon, past or present, and aimed at building a testable body of knowledge open to rejection or confirmation. Pseudoscience attempts to look like science. It does not self-correct, relies on personal experiences rather than empiricism. It does not test itself to fail and relies on the supernatural for explanations. It often resorts to holism, tolerates inconsistencies, promises the impossible, and shows little to no progress from inception. Ruscio, 2006. Paranormal is defined as something that is outside the range of normal experience or scientific explanation. From the work of Kaida in 2006, the methods for scientifically examining the presence of ghosts have been proven incorrect. While this does not completely exclude the possibility of ghosts in existence, any claims regarding ghosts have been disproven. A skeptic is someone who demands evidence for claims, uses a scientific method to examine evidence, is not a cynic, is open-minded about new ideas, and must balance openness and closeness. For some statistical information, a poll was conducted by CBS News back in 2005. With a random sample of over 800 people, it was found that 48% of people believe in ghosts, while 45% do not. Of the sample, 22% believed that they had seen or felt the presence of a ghost at some point in their lives, while 77% did not. Again, 78% believe in life after death, while only 8% believe that science would ever be able to prove or provide evidence to support the existence of ghosts. One of the first attempts to contact ghost hunters were to the Pro's investigations team based in Oklahoma City. After several emails back and forth, Pro's agreed to provide information regarding ghosts and ghost hunting techniques, tools, and training. However, when the questions were asked, Pro's no longer responded to us. Pro's website does contain some answers. It is interesting to note the information contained on Pro's website on what it means to be a skeptic. Skeptics are often folks who view contrary beliefs in the paranormal. Often they may have limited information into the research and facts concerning the paranormal. Often, for most people, they would have to have some sort of encounter before believing in such things. Still others would have a hard time believing in anything paranormal. After all, there isn't any real proof of these things being real, and they do exist. Agape Paranormal Services are the Oklahoma City paranormal investigators specializing in Christian paranormal research. In petitioning to God through Jesus Christ, Agape Paranormal Services assist in finding the way to heaven. The goal of Agape is to help those on the other side move to heaven while banishing demons by using the authority given by Jesus. They cannot be reached for any additional information.
The season debut of Ghost Hunters in September of 2012 had high ratings of over 1.1 million viewers aged 25 to 54. Not too shabby for two plumbers who originally started by working part-time on ghost hunting adventures. According to recent interviews, Grant Wilson and Jason Hawes admit to taking plumbing jobs part-time and working more full-time with ghost hunters. Both Wilson and Hawes admit that they are in the field to disprove and to shed light on what some people believe are ghosts, but to also assist those who may be terrified by hauntings in their own homes. When asked about skeptic attitudes in regards to ghost hunting, Wilson responded, I don't care what all the skeptics think of what we're doing because they don't need help. There are people who need help in their homes. Who's going to help them? Are the skeptics going to help them? No. In June of 2008, the Independent Investigations Group awarded Ghost Hunters the Truly Terrible Television Award for peddling pseudoscience and superstition. Investigator and author Benjamin Radford, reviewing Haas' book Ghost Hunting, states the book has four paragraphs allotted to the chapter The Scientific Approach. Radford states that the reason behind this is because Haas does not use or believe in much of a scientific approach. With the success of ghost hunting shows such as Ghost Hunters, other forms of communication have been developed to jump in on the ghost bandwagon. For example, this website, ghostsingles.com, attempts to look like traditional dating websites. There are selection criteria enabled to find what any ghost would be looking for in a potential partner for eternity. Although the site is limited, it does provide some entertainment value. If you find yourself with time to kill, enter the chat room and read what other ghosts are saying and doing. While this site is for fun, the terms of use, should one choose to join, clearly state that any disagreement between you and GhostSingles.com will result in you agreeing to go to hell. By joining GhostSingles.com, one has access to creating their own profile, communicating with others who are interested in the dead, and potential partnership. Should you find someone of interest, arrangements can be made to meet up. Ectoplasmophilia would be the appropriate term for that agreement. The tools necessary for any ghost hunter differ from ghost hunter to ghost hunter. First, the most common things to use are video cameras. This digital camera is responsible for capturing weird changes in scenery, movement of objects, and any indescribable shadowy figures. It is often left out of sight to capture the environment. The digital camera serves the same purpose as a video camera, only it is used only by the ghost hunters during the search. Next up is EVP equipment, which is used to capture electronic voice phenomena. This technique is used by asking questions in a haunted location and waiting for a response. Responses require translation and can often be interpreted in many different ways by different observers. EVP is comparable to backmasking records. EMF, or electromagnetic field detectors, are used to identify changes in electrical current. It is believed that ghosts produce EMF and using an EMF detector may assist in identifying ghost areas or electricity. Next, thermometers are used to identify changes in temperature in a room. It is widely believed that ghosts produce temperature drops without drafts from windows or doors. Next are motion detectors. And these are used to detect motion in an area. This particular model comes with a camera built in to record anything that trips the sensor. Flashlights are often the only light source for an evening ghost hunt. It is important to get filters for the light in order to prevent excessive brightness or preventing night vision filming from actually working. Depending on the belief system of the ghost hunter, many additional items might also be used to find ghosts. For example, dousing rods, compasses, or wind chimes may be used by some ghost hunters. One method for obtaining any of the items necessary for a ghost hunting includes starter kits. Any starter kit can start anywhere from $119 to $600. When figuring out how much it was going to cost to purchase the items individually, we came up with spending approximately $512 just to get basic items. If you had a personal belief system that required additional items for ghost hunting, you could look at spending up to $150 more. 
it is important to take a look at the necessary training to become a ghost hunter. The internet can provide anyone with a plethora of information regarding ghost hunting trainings, classes, and field investigations. Fees for these services can range anywhere from $15 per person per outing all the way to $400 for an at-home DVD training and certification. While these trainings are useful in gaining hands-on experience, there are many inconsistencies from training to training. As there are no degrees offered in parapsychology and no accreditation to any of the classes offered at institutes of higher education, many of these courses may be considered a waste of money. So how much can you expect to make as a ghost hunter? With free inspections and free overnight stays and capturing evidence for free, you're not looking at making a whole lot of money unless you create a show like Ghost Hunters and it's on network television. Do the smart thing and don't quit your day job. Paranormal investigations, or ghost hunting, attempt to look scientific in the approaches to measure the events. However, the tools used are validated measures of processes other than ghosts. While these tools are reliable, they are not validated. Ghost hunting relies on the personal experiences of those experiencing a haunting. Ghost hunting is the default label for the phenomena that were not explainable with the methods used. And ghost hunting is very inconsistent from ghost hunter to ghost hunter. In the early 1900s, Harry Price provided evidence that some photographers were double exposing photos in order to claim images of the dead. 110 years later, and photography is still the main tool for uncovering ghosts. This shows little to no progress in over 100 years. And this lack of progress is the number one requirement for becoming a ghost hunter. The number two requirement is to not respond to information, email requests, 